Greetings to everybody. Let's have a discussion in here. I want to have a discussion in here. I want to have a discussion. Let's have a discussion about this. Let's have a discussion. And, and this is why those of you all that are so quick to jump just because you think somebody from another race killed somebody from this race. But I want to talk to you about how is this happening in an all-black place where all black people and we don't see no other race. We don't see police officers in this. We don't see nobody from government in this. We don't see no racists in this. But we do see people of the same race killing each other. Now, I, I, I want, I, I, no, no, we, we got to get this correct because what's happening in our generation right now is all spiritual. And if, if someone is a real prophet, they'll understand what's happening. If they're a real prophet, I'm not talking about. I'm, I'm talking about if they're a real prophet. If you're a real friend of Jesus, you'll know what's happening in this day and time. Number one, here's what we got to deal with. I, I want to say this because sometimes you don't really know what's going on because the news media, they magnify what they want to magnify. But this is what I was talking about in my other broadcasts. This is what I was talking about in my other broadcast. How, how come the media magnify if another race kills another race, but they don't, nobody talks about how the same race is killing each other. The same race. Now, now tell me this. How is 102 people shot in black on black crime? And then we have black people petitioning for other races to stop killing them. And now I, I, I want to know, I, I want to also know this, why they don't go paint the streets in Chicago? Why don't the people that's so, so zealous about, why don't they go paint the streets in Chicago? Why don't we see any rioters in Chicago? Huh? You know why? Because you can't play the race card. Because it's all black people. So they can't say, oh, there's white people killing us. They can't say that. Because it's the same people killing each other. So, so at the end of the day, how really can you petition and say, oh, I want, I want justice for this. How could you do it if it's the same race killing each other? Now, I want to ask you this. How was five, chi five children was killed in black on black crime? What did the children do? What did the children do? Five children. What did the five children do? It was stated that while they were driving in the vehicle, a shooter comes up next to the vehicle and shoots up the vehicle. Where was the cops in that? Where was the racist in that? Now I want to ask another question. Where's the protest about that? And, and watch this. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you some of this. That's why some of you all need to stick with the gospel and stop jumping on this bandwagon, pushing race and pushing all that type of stuff. Cause that stuff, it don't, 
make for love, it just makes for hate. It just makes for strife. It just makes for wickedness. Tell me how five children was killed. Black children. And tell me how a hundred people, over a hundred people were shot. In Chicago. Black on black crime. Why isn't there protests all over America about that? So what's the real motive here? If all of these different organizations have pure hearts and they're really just genuine about the fact that black lives does matter, what's, okay, so, so why don't they go rally for this? Why we don't hear none of those petitioners talk about that, but they just magnify the fact that, oh, you know, dot, 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 dot. Think about that. So, so next time, because there's going to be more injustices happening, and I'm prophesying this, the next time you see somebody get killed, right? And let me just say this. Let me just keep the vibes on it. When you see somebody get killed, right, and you see them get killed by another race, keep that same energy that you got when they get killed by another race. For the same, keep that same energy when you deal with the fact that same race is killing each other. You see what I'm saying? The next time you see somebody get murdered by another race, and if you really mean and you're genuine about what you stand for, have that same energy. Why don't none of the people that push all of these agendas, why aren't they in Chicago doing a protest? Huh? Huh? Why is that? Why is that? And, and why is black people killing each other? Why? Chicago has shootings all the time. Detroit has shootings all the time. Why haven't there been protests about those shootings? So what is the agenda that's happening here in these days? You that are spiritual, he that have an ear, stay in the spirit concerning what happens. You know, some of you believers on here, you drop the ball. You know why? Because when that young man got murdered the other day, you, you chose hatred. You chose bitterness. You chose flesh because you got in your feelings. You kept watching that vi that video. You kept watching that video and what that video was 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 talking about and you kept watching it and you let it make you angry. You let it make you hateful. You kept watching that video and all you kept seeing was, "Oh, they did this. They did this." And in your heart, you're not even in the spirit no more. You're not even in the presence of God no more. And the Holy Spirit can't talk to you about nothing no more. And here's what happens. God is still watching you. If you're a child of God, you can't let yourself get involved in this whole race thing and this whole um, um, hatred thing and this whole revenge thing. Because number one, if you're a child of God, you would know for sure that we don't even get justice by no protest. You're not going to find somebody. That's in the spirit trying to get justice by natural means. You know how you get justice? Come unto me, all that are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. That's how you get justice. You don't get justice by, oh, somebody just, oh, you know, we just doing this and doing this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And justice going to be there all the time. But if you are a saved person, you get your justice by praising God. You get your justice by walking in forgiveness. You get your justice by forgiving those that you have ought against. You get your justice because you chose to turn your face to the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you into all things. That's how you get your justice. I won't get back here. How is 102 people shot in Chicago? How is five people killed? How? How? 
And how is this all black on black crime? And if the slogan that we all have been hearing really matters, if the slogan, I don't even want to, I, 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 I don't even, I don't even want to spend too much time on that slogan because, like I said, it's not even what you say. It's the spirit behind what you say. Do you know three people can tell you that they love you? And then two of them can have in their mind, I need your money. One of them can have in their mind, oh, I just want to get access to you. The third one can have in their mind, I want to take care of you. But they all said the same word. Here's what I'm saying. There's been a slogan going around that we all been hearing. But here's the motive. What's the motive behind the slogan? Because if, if people are really standing for this slogan and it's real to them, and they feel that God put this on their heart to be on this slogan and to push this slogan, why aren't they in Chicago? Because that's where the slogan is needed the most. Minnesota had one person. But what about these 14 people that got killed? And what about these 102 people that got shot? And what about these five children that got murdered? If it's really, if it's really genuine, if it's really genuine, why isn't there protest going on where it's really happening? Well, it's real out there. Why isn't it true? No, no, because guess what? They selling merchandise. They selling merchandise. They selling merchandise. They getting money. They, they pushing the slogan because they trying to push this whole agenda of how the president of America is racist. I never met a racist person that give millions of dollars to the race that people are calling them racist towards. Racist people don't give millions of dollars to people that they're racist against. Racist people don't pay for black people to go to school to become something. So what is the real agenda? What is the real agenda? He that has an ear, uh, ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying. How is 102 people shot? 14 people killed and five children murdered? Wait, you, t no, 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 this gotta be incorrect. You telling me five children? Five children was killed? Murdered out of the wait, 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 wait. You listen, 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 listen. And so, so let, let me just say this. And so, there's people saying, don't call us thugs, don't call us animals, don't, don't treat us dot, dot, dot. But what is this? What is this? What is this? You murdering five children? You murdering five children? And, and, and let me just say this, and let me just be real raw. You know, I can't even talk, because and I, and I, I've experienced racial injustice before. I've had that happen in my, my, my state. I've had that happen in other states. I remember I was in Florida one time, and the cop pulled me over. And, and they pulled me over. They said, we just, we, are you drunk? We just wanted to call. We just pulled you over. I had just came from the airport. I was just in a rental vehicle. But the cop just see me in the rental vehicle, wanted, wanted to test me out to see if I'm doing something. I've had that happen. I've rode around in Texas before and the cop just pulled me over. Don't got a reason. Can we check you? I've had that happen to me. So I understand prejudice and things like that. But I've also looked at other things as well. I've been in stores where 
another race officer would tell me, get in front of me. You can go before me. I'll pay for this for you. I've told officers Jesus loved them. And they say, yes, I love Jesus. I'm a believer too. Nice to meet you, brother. I've had that happen to me. I was in the store the other day and met, met an officer and the officer was opening up the door for me and volunteered to help me with my, with, my, with my stuff. I've had that happen. And so when we weigh out fully, you got to understand the agenda of how Satan sends things to make you hateful, to make you evil. How Satan sends things to make you wicked. So that your mind can go in a place of hatred towards other races. You, 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 you're not supposed to get so deep in meditation on stuff that's negative. You know it's injustice there. You know that stuff is wrong. Because it's going to paint a certain picture in your mind. It's going to corrupt you. And how could you love your neighbor as yourself? How can you forgive? And, and saints, here's, here's, here's what's so crazy to me. And those of you all on here, right? We always hear black people talking about how slavery and we need old reparations. White people don't owe us nothing. White people don't owe us no reparations. Go get a job and get it. All this opportunity. And most of the opportunity is a white person behind it, giving it to you. There was another story. A brother was trying to petition on his job. And the, and the, per, the, the white lady that hired him, right, is telling him, hey, this is your job in the company. We not petitioning this right now. You got to work for our job. And he was so vigilant. No, I need to promote this and I'm not having it. And he gets fired. You know the dumminess in that? The white woman that gave you the job ain't racist because she gave you a job. So you petitioning against her when she not racist. And it's a spirit of slavery. Because guess what? When you can't pay your bills and you getting kicked out your apartment and you in debt and you lose your car, you're in slavery again. Because guess what? The borrower is servant to the lender. That's what the word of God say. So guess what? When you ain't got no money, you a black man, you can't take care of your children, that's slavery. And you got to be careful. When the door open up for you and God using someone to bless you, you're going to create animosity be between you and that person because you're trying to promote your race. Well, guess what? If they was against your race, they would have had hired you. They paying you a paycheck. It would be smart that whoever pays you, you obey them. You don't got to be a rocket scientist to know that if somebody is giving you a paycheck to feed you, to take care of you, to make sure you good. It will be wise for you to respect their preference. Or you want to be underneath a bridge. How many of that we see people underneath a bridge all their life? We hear people preach all the time how somebody is a good man. Somebody is a good man. But you know what? How is he a good man and he left his family with no food to eat? How is he a good man and he don't have no money to, to take care of his children, his children, children? How is he a good man? Because the word of God says that a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children, children. So you can't say that as a good man, because if it is a good man, he would meet the biblical standards. All this stuff going on in our nation. We're not in agreement with, with nobody murdering nobody, and they ain't do them nothing. But we also not in agreement with the fact that people are stirring up strife. Some of you are, you're teaching your black children to be mad at white people. You going to hell.
You, you going to hell. You keep teaching them all this history about how blacks were wrong. You going to go to hell for corrupting your children and making them wicked in their hearts towards other races before they even get a chance. You that keep teaching your children, you better repent and stop placing all that discord in the hearts of people. People don't need to hear that. They need people in their life that's going to train them how to walk in love, how to walk in maturity, how to have a higher level of reaction to adversity. They don't need someone to teach them how to hate. Satan going to teach them how to hate. Satan going to teach them how to walk in bitterness. They need somebody that's going to teach them how to turn the other cheek. If Jesus died on the cross and Jesus didn't do nobody no wrong and Jesus didn't sin against nobody, he went around doing good and they murdered him. I want to know this, why black people don't got that same energy? Why they don't got that same energy for Jesus? Why haven't black people did a whole rally about the fact that Jesus died and it was injustice? Why they don't? I, I, and I'm shocked. Some of you all jump out for a rally for a black man, but you won't even jump out for a rally for Jesus. I'm shocked. You won't go out in your streets and evangelize, but you quick to go out to talk about how cops killing this. Oh, but you a child of God, right? You was a child of God, but you never went out on your streets to evangelize. I bet you never went on your streets to win nobody at Jesus, to pray for the sick, to heal the sick. I bet you never did that, but you quit to go out on the streets because you're trying to push. Oh, it's, it's hate. It's hate. It's hate. And God ain't in it. God ain't in it. The children of Israel was in bondage. You know why they was in bondage? They wasn't in bondage because old oh, people was just doing it wrong. They was in bondage because they was rejecting their prophets. They was bad mouthing their prophets. Why do you think that God opened up the ground and swallowed up the children of Israel? Because they are attacking Moses. Why does Miriam get leprosy? Because she's talking about Moses. If you really love the Holy Spirit, you can't be a slave. So stop talking about white people owe you reparations. White people don't owe you nothing. Get a job. Work like we all do. And we make money. We pit the work in. We pit the work in. Ain't nobody owe you no reparations. Nobody owe you nothing. And some of you are talking about how a white man owe you reparations. You owe God tithes and offerings. Every time you get income tax, you buying your children everything. You buying a new car. You getting a new apartment. You moving into a new house. You owe God. So you can't be talking about nobody owe you no reparations, please. We not, we, we not a part of that. And, and let me just tell some of you all this. Some of you all think that your history is lynching and slavery. That's, that's, that's if you cursed. If you really a child of God, you shouldn't be talking about you got no black history. And I'm going to tell you like this. If you talk like that, you just a fool. Ain't no wise man talking about no black history and exalting no black. Only fools do that. Because when you're in Christ, there's no skin color. There's neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek. None of those stuff matter. You're a spiritual person. You exalting your flesh. You exalting how you look on the outside to express to me who you are. Only a fool does that. God looks at the heart. He not looking at on that outside stuff. Oh, how my hair looks. Oh, how my body looks. Oh, how my skin looks. God ain't looking at that. And that ain't going to get you into heaven. You can't go up to the cross talking about, Lord, I'm black. I've been in slavery. Oh, I've been in just, I've been in just, they done did injustice to me. 
that stuff ain't going to get you into heaven. It's not going to get you into heaven. You try to go to the Lord, all that stuff, the Lord don't think like that. His thoughts are higher than that. And, and, and saints, I'm going to tell you like this. With the injustice that's going to happen in the future, I'm prophesying this to you. With the injustice that's going to happen in the future and the killings that you're going to see, you better pass the test next time. You better pass the test next time. Pass the test next time. You know what? Pass the test next time and handle yourself correctly. Stop, keep on looking at the video and talk about, oh, we need to get back at the cops. We need to dot, dot, dot. No, no, no. Because what I'm telling you is that the same race is killing each other. How is 102 people shot in Chicago? Over the weekend, 48 hours? Listen, there was more people shot than the amount of hours in those two days. Now watch this. Let me shock you with this. Okay. Let me let me try to do my mathematics. Let me see if I because I, I think that once we got to algebra, you know what I'm saying. You know, you know the vibes, you know. Once you get to algebra, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know the sliding. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying. So 40, let, come on, let's, let's, let's try to do a little mathematics. All right, let me try to drag. Okay, 48, 50 plus 50 is 100. So 48, because that's 48 hours, plus 48 is like 96, I believe, because you take that 6, you, you 8 plus 8, and you, you put the 1 on the top, and, and, and 4, 4, and plus the 1 on the top, that's 9. All right, so 96 hours is if you add two days, 48 hours times two, guess what? You still don't get to the amount of people that was killed this weekend. Listen what I'm saying. If you do 48 twice, right? And for 48 hours, which is two days, and you times it twice, there was still more people murdered. Huh? There were still more people murdered. <laughs> so, 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 let me ask you this. How was more people murdered even if we double the time? If we double the amount of time for two days, there were still more people killed. There were still more people murdered. I, I, I want to see what some of y'all think about this. Huh? Come on, let's do a Q&A real quick. <laughs> Let, nah, let's do a Q&A. Let's do a Q&A. Because I rarely do this, but I'm a prophet. And God speaks to me. The Holy Spirit talks to me. Because this is still his earth. And no matter what people say, this is still God's earth. This still God's earth and the Holy Spirit speaks to me. I want some of you, all, what, what, what's your take on this? What's your take on this? What's your take on this? So what is this whole push with the agenda of doing these protests and all these different stuff? Why they don't keep that same energy and go to Chicago? Why is that? How is 14 people killed in two days? How is five babies killed in two days? Why are little children getting shot by that same race? What the little children did? This not animalistic? I, I heard somebody, I heard somebody say, they was like, um, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the good that's going on. You telling me five children get killed, 14 people get killed in all. 
102 people get shot by guns. And and these this is black on black crime. And you telling me let's talk about something else when the whole nation is pushing This whole nation is pushing for for justice for the same race. But why is the race acting like this? So what is the real push for justice? Are, we, are you going to get justice? So, so you're not going to get justice for these five children? I know that you're going to wear a shirt with a, with, with a man on, on your face, and, uh, on the shirt, right? And I know that you're going to say that you're rallying and you're protesting for a man that got murdered, right? But are you going to wear a, a shirt for these five children that got killed? Now, let's go deep into Chicago because I want to see who over Chicago. Because cause we got to find out the governing spirit over Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we got to find out. Let's, let's look at who over Chicago. Because there's a reason if the leadership not right, how could it, how could it get right? So, so something wrong here. So let's check it. Huh? Let's check, see what's going on here. Let's go check, see. Um, oh, Chicago mayor. Oh, her name is what? I don't even want to say her name. Wait, let, let, wait, hold on, 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 hold on. Okay, so this is a woman, right? Some of you all that want President Trump out of office, you need to go get this woman out of office. Why? The same energy that you got trying to get President Trump out of office, you need to take that same energy and get this woman out of office. Those of you all that's, that want President Trump out of office so bad, go take that same energy and, 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 and vote, vote this woman out. Now, let's, 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 let's find out something here. Okay, let's find out something here. All right. Oh, let's see here. Mm. Mm. Okay. Oh, she from the Democratic Party. Ah, okay. Yeah, all right. Okay, so, so Democrats, right, is over Chicago. Democrats are over Chicago. And this is what's going on underneath Democrats. Now, mind you, President Trump is not a Democrat. All right. President Trump is not a Democrat. Oh, so she's a Democrat. And this is what is allowed to go on underneath Democrat ruling. Oh, oh, so she's married to a woman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I just saw something in the spirit. God just said to me, he said, son, if I should delay my coming and I should let life go on on earth, he said there will come a time where they will petition for a homosexual president. God said the time is coming where there will be a push for a lesbian president. Remember what I'm telling you. I just saw it in the spirit while I'm talking right here. I just, I just heard God say that. He just showed me that in a vision. And he told me there's coming a time where they're going to look for a homosexual president. They're going to look for a lesbian president. 
Now, okay, so so her spouse name, let's find out her spouse name. I want to find out her husband name because I want to see what her covering. I want to see who who's who's over her, who's her covering. Cause she, cause I know, I know, she, I know she married, but I want to see who her husband name. Cause I know she got a husband. I want to find out. Um, what's her husband name? What's her husband name? I know she got a husband, so I want to find out. Um, oh, her husband name is Amy. Oh, dang. Wait, maybe I'm not reading this right. Hold on, I gotta look again. Hold on. I think my glasses got in the way. I think the glasses took away my sight. I think I couldn't see because the glasses, I think it was the glasses that that took away my vision. So I took off the glasses so I could see correctly. Her spouse name is Amy. Wait, this can't be correct. So Chicago is underneath a mayor that's a lesbian. So no wonder this, this state only inaugurates people that are of an abomination. Because this is what they want, abomination. So watch this. So... Why don't people keep that same energy that talk about that they want justice and they want just why they don't keep that same energy with their governors and mayors? And so we want a president out of, a, 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 of the United States of America. Let, let me help some of you out because some of you all don't understand nothing. Do you know that everything that happens, they always point to President Trump, right? But guess what? That's why we have governors. We have governors and mayors because they supposed to govern over the city. Listen, they supposed to go over the city and make sure that everything is in place. That's not the president's job. It's the job of the people that are calling themselves governors over Minnesota, governors over Chicago, governors over Detroit, mayor over Detroit, mayor over Chicago, mayor over Atlanta. Now, now it's funny to me that Atlanta got so much talk, right? But if we look deep into Atlanta, hold on, let me see if I can find the mayor of Atlanta. Let me, let me, I, I know it's a racist person. It, it got to be a racist person. The mayor of Atlanta got to be a racist person because after all, this this Atlanta and Atlanta got so much injustice going on. So it got to be a racist. It got to be a racist place. Wait, the mayor, I know it's a white woman that hates black people. I know it is because it, it got too much injustice in the police system. And if you are mayor, if you are governor, you're really supposed to be going into all of the departments of your state to find out what is crooked, what needs fixing, what needs reformation, what needs perfection what needs training i know as a white person that's be oh oh wait oh so the mayor of atlanta is a black woman hold on let me put back on my glasses to see if I, I maybe i lost my sight like samson when they took him in the presence of the philistines after delilah betrayed him oh let me just check here see maybe i lost my sight like uh paul did when when jesus struck him down he couldn't see for three days hold on wait let me take my glasses off i think my glasses is actually stopping my ability to see what's happening here. Wait, the current mayor of Atlanta is a black woman. She was elected in May. Oh, oh, so it's funny to me, right? That black people, wait, 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 wait. So, so we got black people in, in power, right? And the stuff's still happening where they are. My question to, to this is this. Why isn't your black leader involved in the petitioning of the injustice that you believe is happening? So Atlanta is underneath a mayor that's black. 
But they playing the race card. Now, I'm not talking about this situation that just happened with a shooting. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that there's such an agenda to, to push racism, racism, racism. But who's, who's, who's actually over places? And then this same person has so much talk. She has so much talk about President Trump, about how he don't know how to do stuff and he need to be quiet. But how is you a mayor since 2017? Let's see how she is a mayor. Let's see. Okay, she was elected mayor in 2017. Okay, so that's 365 days. Okay, nothing happened. That's another 365 days. There's nothing happened. There's another 365 days. There's nothing happening. Oh. Oh. So... For three whole years, she's been in office. Now it's going on four years. Next year will be four years. So three years, ain't nothing happening. This reminds me of the former presidency that we just had for eight years. Eight years. And see, you black people, you hate hearing this. You know why? Because it is the truth. You hate hearing this. You hate hearing this. And this is why there has been slavery going on in the own black community. Because you run from truth. You don't want to hear it, but it's right there. And you can't hide from it. And, and watch this. You can say, oh, the information in Atlanta is wrong. You can't say that the shooting in Chicago is wrong. You can't say that people that were shot in Chicago was wrong. Could you say that? So, so you really don't have a point. And this is the thing that try to hide stuff underneath the cover. What I'm saying to you is, if you're going to have that energy towards other races, make sure you check your own people. And what is your own people doing? What is your own people doing? So if you so, oh, you know, is, is other races that doing this to us. What about your own people? What about your own people? You black people, you don't want to hear this, you know, because it's, it's truthful and it, and, it, and it hurts because what we finding out here is that a lot of people that are in actual power are actually black. And they Democrats. So hereby, some of you all want to vote Democrat, but this is what the Democrats stand for. Chicago been underneath Democrats. All these places that are full of murders, disorder. Seattle is underneath Democrats. That's the same place where they blocked off the street. It was reported that they had a shooting there the other day. Democrats. No order. No protection. Democrats. This what you want our nation underneath? You, you really got the audacity to say you're a child of God? You want the nation underneath a Democrat? I was shocked. I found out that President, uh, 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 when, when President Obama was in office, Listen, I hear you, uh, Kaysen, uh, Hamilton, you said the mayor in Atlanta fighting for many things legislatively, but she hasn't won, so she has no power. Next, she has no power. You got three years and you still fighting? You need to sit down then. I've never had a fight for three years. Either you gonna win, Muhammad Ali never had a fight for three years. Mike Tyson never had a fight for three years. Jesus never had a fight for three years. So Moses didn't fight Pharaoh for three years. So she has no power, so she needs to sit down. Thank you for just letting me know how powerless this woman really is.
Because for three years, she has no power to change anything. So why is she up there? I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'm listening. I'll wait. I'll wait. Okay. All right. Thank you. So this is what you want in power? Disorder? Disorder? We saw stuff happening and the protest, the, the stuff that was happening. Okay, if a man gets killed, right? Why are you going to go burn down the building of somebody that built their building up from the ground up? And most times they are black. Why are you burning down the building? Why are you burning down their building if you're trying to get justice for somebody that you say is of your same race? Why are you burning down their building? And we call that, oh, this is, this is, this is, this is, uh, this is how we protest. This is how we get justice. How, how you get justice by harming somebody that didn't do nothing to you? You going to burn down their business? You know, the news media don't talk about how there was black people that went go shot up a black man that was over a business. That black man didn't do nothing to them. But it's the same crime. It's hypocritical. That's what I'm hearing God say. It's hypocrisy. God said there's a lot of hypocrisy in this generation. You know why? Because the way that you're talking about, oh, some of you all, you was quick to jump out with a protest, but you can't even love your brother. It's sad. And some of you all call yourself saved. You talk about that you, you jump out for a protest, talk about you jumping out for a protest because a black man got murdered, right? But you won't jump out when your brother in Christ is getting murdered by other church folk. You won't jump out when you see other people being slandered. You, you won't do that. But you quick to jump out, talking about, oh, you petitioning for the justice of somebody. And you the same one that's always gossiping, talking about people behind their back. Use fake. Use real fake. Because at the end of the day, while you trying to talk about you justice and walking for somebody else, what about who meets you every day and you don't even know how to be nice to them? The Bible talks about what a murderer is. It said he that hates his brother. Black community got so much hatred in it. Here, here I am. I'm supposed to be, you know, according to the natural. I don't claim that. I'm supposed to be according to the natural, young and black, right? I remember coming on the generation, on my generation. You know what my generation said? Because I'm moving the power of God and I'm black. I'm using witchcraft. That's what my, that's, that's what my same race. I've, I've had preachers do videos just to say, oh, this not the real power of God. This demons. People got delivered in my ministry from homosexuality, lesbianism, lesbianism, drug use. But guess what? I've had the same race of people try to slander me, take me down, to tell people not to follow me. So I don't want to hear it. This whole push on, oh, I'm getting justice for this. It don't just happen just because there's another race. This happens in this race all the time. And it's too much hatred in blacks. It's too much wickedness in blacks, especially black preachers. It's too much hatred in blacks. And you know if it's hatred in black preachers, you know it's going to be hatred in black congregations. Some black people, they teach their congregation racism. Talk about black church. You, you serious? The carnality, the hypocrisy 
is strong. So it, it really, it, and it really, it really can't, it really can't go to the place of you saying, oh, you know, other races are doing us wrong. Because when no race is involved, they still doing each other wrong. Some of you are on here. It wasn't a white woman that went go talk to you, talk to your boss about you. It was a black girl. Some of you are on here. Your relationship wasn't tampered with by a white person. It was another black person. Some of you are, your marriages wasn't, you didn't receive wrong counsel from another white person. You received wrong counsel from another black person. So, the truth of the matter is, you shouldn't get involved. And nothing exalting a race. You know why? Because watch this. You can say other races are injustice. But your same race is injustice. Your same race is injustice. You talk about uh, other people giving injustice to black people. Tell me why black people, every time a black person rise up, they attack them. And I don't even just got to talk about my, my uh, uh, preacher realm, right? We can go into the world. Look at how black people fight each other. They beef with each other. They fight all the time. But that's the presentation you pick. So what's the solution for all of this? Is not rioting, is not protesting, is not attacking the president of the United States of America. It's not claiming people are racist this and racist that. That's not the solution. You know what the solution is? Come unto me, all that are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Jesus is the solution. Jesus is the only solution. And those of you all that are black, he going to judge you if you raise your children with this black superiority and, oh, we the chosen people. You're not no chosen person if Jesus didn't choose you. It don't matter your skin color or not. You're not no original chosen people. And this whole debate talking about Jesus is black. Oh, and da, da, da. Listen. If you so shallow that you got a result to talk about Jesus is black. Just know that Jesus don't want nobody in his heaven that try to pit him with no color and try to pit him with no culture. He is God. He not repping, he not repping none of that, that natural carnal stuff. He pit you in flesh and blood. He not flesh and blood. He spirit and he life. You can't pit him in that boat. You can't pit him in that boat. You can't pit him in that boat. Because he is God. That's the only solution. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Besides him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer, oh, for the world today. Besides him, there's no other. What you got to say about it? I want to hear some of you all. What you got to say about it? What you got to say about it? I'm going live on, 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 my, on my other stuff. But before I get off of here, what you got to say about it? We don't got much time. Come on, speak your piece. If you got something to say. Y'all know I'm speaking the truth. You you sit right there and try to act like, nah, nah, nah. But you know I'm speaking the truth. You know I'm speaking the truth. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Besides him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. And, and by the way, some of you all may say, okay, well, you talked about the mayor of Atlanta and she a black woman, right? 
But watch this here. The mayor of Atlanta wanted all the smoke with President Trump. My, my, what I said on here is this. How you going to want smoke with the president and you got a position and you're not handling yours? That's like, no, no. That's like me having a house, right? And my backyard is all messed up, my grass growing. And I go over to someone that I think got a bigger house than me. And I think that they got a big old mansion. And I go over to that house and say, why your backyard not, not cut? Oh, because I got a smaller house? Oh, because I got a smaller house? And listen, uh, uh, Demiso Gilbert, bless you. Bless you. But I, I, I want you to also know, hey, I'm a young man, you know? And so I just want to say this. I'm not saying that you're talking about this, but I'm just saying I'm addressed a certain way uh, because I'm very creative. You know what I'm saying? So it don't take away the fact that, you know, that I that I, I, I love the Holy Spirit and I'm full of the Holy Spirit. I'm a young man, you know, so I'm not going to dress. I'm not going to dress and act like, you know, older, you know, as as you get older, you act a certain way you you and and. I have learned that the truth of the matter is age does a lot too as well. When you're growing in the spirit, your age, your natural age has a lot to do with it as well. Um, let me say this here. But bless you. If it wasn't for you, it was for somebody else to hear that. Because some people want me to dress a certain way, right? But I'm still young. Jesus was a young man when he was on earth, you know, so not saying that older people are not creative. Older people are creative, but you know, you know, when you're young, you, you have more of a raw creative side. That's the better way to say it. When you're young, you have more of a raw creative side. Drea Taylor, let me answer you. You said, you said what you said. <laughs> You said what you said. But let me say something to you, Drea Taylor. Drea Taylor, you really got mad because I started talking about this old black thing. You know what I'm saying? I said something that struck your chord. But let me just say this. That's why I'm on all social media. I preach to everybody. You say, why do I, why do I don't go preach to them? I preach to, I preach all the time. I work hard as a preacher. My work ethic is crazy. I, ju I just dropped a video on YouTube. I put a video on, on Periscope. I put a video on Facebook, all in less than 12 hours. I'm putting another video on YouTube. I got another video I'm doing on Periscope. I'm doing a video right here. I have a crazy work ethic, and I've been doing this for almost, almost a long time now, like years and years. And I never fainted. And I always do this. Like, and so we are preaching to them. We are getting out to them. And just like you and anybody, you have a choice whether or not you're going to deem it to be truth. And you got to go to the Holy Spirit. You got to go to the Holy Spirit. I always tell my people, go to the Holy Spirit. Because ain't nothing to hide about Prophet Joshua Holmes. You know what I'm saying? So I've always told my people, go to Jesus. And so this, you know, even though I talked about these things, I'm just giving the correlation of why things are happening. And I'm also pointing out why is there such a magnification of black, black, black in this time when blacks are killing each other? So, so if you're going to, you, you have to, you have to uh, be worthy of the respect you demand. So what I'm saying is, if you want the respect that you're looking for from an area, you can't force nobody to respect you. Just respect yourself.
So the whole thing with this whole generation, this generation, everybody trying to demand respect. You got to be worthy of respect, not because you, not just because dot dot dot. And I'm saying these people that are actually killing each other is messing it up for us. Because I, can we just be honest here? If I'm a white officer and I hear about shootings going on in Chicago and I'm seeing this whole image of what's being presented and I'm seeing black on black crime. When I come upon your vehicle, man, you know, I'm going to have that mentality if I don't got Jesus. If Jesus not in my heart to tell me, no, don't think like that. Not every black person, not like that. I'm still going to come at you heavy. So I don't agree. I don't agree with no injustice. I don't agree with no hatred. I'm not a hateful person. There's not a person in my life that could ever say that they met me and I killed them. And no, nobody can say that. Because Everybody that I have met, I have blessed them. I've took their life to another degree. I have never met a person black and I've helped my black people out. And I, I don't got to go too much in detail about that because the Bible talk about don't don't talk about who you give your arms to. So so we, we I'm not going to go there about no fruit because that's between God and me. And, and we don't need no praise on that. But what I'm saying that. The truth of the matter is. There's a, there's a large margin of people that are misrepresenting how a culture is. So if somebody is on the outside looking and they see you acting like an animal, they see you, when they come upon you, of course they're going to do you like you're an animal. So if, here's what I want to say. If, if, if black people really was moved by George Floyd death, there wouldn't be 102 shootings in Chicago. That's what I want to say. I want to say that like that. And if they was really moved by the fact that if your skin is a certain color, it matters, they wouldn't be shooting up each other like that. They wouldn't be shooting up each other like that. What you think about it? What you think about it? What you think about it? Let's talk about it for, for three more minutes. Let's talk about it for three more minutes. Let's talk about it for three more minutes. Man, this is a shame, though. How does 102 people get shot in... How does 102 people get shot in two days? That wasn't even 102 hours. So people was getting shot more than once. Hey, Steve, that's a good statement there. That's a good statement there. Steve Divine, that's a good statement. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Beside him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus, you're the answer for the world today. Besides him, there's no other. Jesus, you're the way. Jesus, you're the answer for the world today. Besides him, there's no other. Jesus, you're the only way. Jesus, you're the answer for the world today. Besides him, there's no other. Jesus, you're the only way. 
Jesus, you're the answer for the world today. Since you, you think about it, we in this generation, right? But it's a lot of stuff that we see, right? And, and it doesn't make for love. What I'm saying is that the whole push on black this, black this, black this, that's not the solution. What I'm saying is, why do black people do each other wrong and then get mad when other races do you wrong? That, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. That's like a man disrespecting his family, right? Boom, boom, boom. Disrespect, disrespect, disrespect. And then another man comes and say, yeah, dot, 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 dot. And then you say, don't disrespect my family. And so it's like that man can say, well, I'm disrespecting them because you disrespecting them. But if, if that man is respecting his family and you disrespect and you say, don't disrespect my family, it's like you have a greater weight. Like your, your, your voice has more of a conviction on it because the person can look at you and say, well, I should consider because this person is actually doing this. So what I'm saying is if you are a believer, don't get involved in this whole race stuff because Satan is still behind it. This is what I'm telling you. Don't talk about black this or black that or we the chosen people or, or it's us. No, no, stop all that because God ain't with that. Now you in the flesh and God ain't with you. God, God ain't with you when you're talking about, oh, it, it's black people, the reason why America is what it... No, God ain't with that. Jesus, the reason why America exists. It's not because of no slaves. It's not because of black people. It's not because of you could dance and all. No, it's not that. Once you start doing that, now you out of the spirit. Now you walking in the agenda of Satan and that's what Satan wanted in the first place. It's not about the color of your skin. It's not about how, how big you are, how small you are, how tall you are. All that stuff is carnal. It's natural. It don't have nothing to do with God. Some of you all, you have watched me for years, right? Instead of you just receive and grow, and experience the testimonies that a lot of people have experienced following me, you know what you do? You look at what I got on. You look at somebody saying, oh, he's a king. Oh, but you get mad if you say the president called people a thug. But it's like, where, what are you really saying? You don't want a young black man to be called a king. But then you get mad and say, oh, don't call us thugs. So what do you really want? My own race got mad because my people respect me. Also, you want them to disrespect me. So you don't want young black men to be looked at wrong. But then if there's a young black man that God raises up. And, and the crazy thing about it. I got white daughters. I got Spanish daughters. I got white sons. I got Spanish sons. I got all type of different races in my ministry. I got, and, and guess what? I don't even see them as color. That's why, that's why I'm pushing this agenda of God so strong to stop looking at the natural to try to decide who people are because that's not, and, and, and it, it don't work. If another race does it to black and it don't work if black does it to white because black people are still making white people feel wrong. I've heard black preachers talking about white people. You got white partners. If you want to talk about your white partners, give them back their thousands of dollars that they sold into your black ministry. If you want to talk about white this and white that, 
Go give those thousands of dollars back to the white people that sold into your so-called black church, black ministry. And now it has become a black church, a white church. Are you serious? Jesus didn't have none of that on earth. And that's the problem. That's the problem that men are getting away from Jesus. And you can't decide who is with Jesus or who's not. But you could hear who's with Jesus by what they stand for, by what they impart to you, by how they make you mature to see peace, to seek peace. When people stray from Jesus, that's why we got hatred. What you got to say about it? Thomas, you said that um, you talked about history, right? But Thomas, I want you to check this out. Thomas James, I don't want to know about history. Because anybody that looks backwards is not wise. All throughout the Bible, we see people looking back. Lot's wife looked back and got devoured. People that have a vision don't have to look backwards. People that have a vision, we don't have to know our history. You see what I'm saying? Because we create futures. We not those of you are that's why that's why you can't go forward. Because you're looking in the back. You're talking about history. What has history paid you? History not making you nothing. The only thing that you can't change is the past. God gave you today and anointed you to change today. Think about that. Think about that. He gave you today. So, so why are we going to learn about history for? And if, if you say, okay, our history is slavery and we got wronged and we got mistreated. Why do I need that in my spirit? Catch that. The Bible tells me that if I'm going to have good success, I got to meditate on the word. So why would I let the word of what the devil did? Why would I magnify the devil in my memory? Think about that. So, so that's not going to create forgiveness. That's not going to create the ways of the spirit. So you got to think about that. And then the, the bad thing about it is that you are taking the wrong history. You're taking the history of defeat and slavery. Take the history of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Take the history of biblical people that overcame the devil. Take the history of people that overcame sin, that walked in the blessing, that were rich, that God made successful, made them pedestals, made them examples. In the book of Hebrews, it caused, it caused them the cloud of many witnesses. So be careful what you keep in your spirit. You know, I've had situations where it's like, you know, you, you experience some injustice in like high places, but I don't keep that. Why would I want to keep that? And, 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 watch this here. If you know somebody has wronged you, right, or something has happened that was wrong, why would you want to remember that? What are you doing for yourself? Do you know that's why so many people are sick? Do you know that's why so many people are having health issues? It's because their mind not right. Some of people is having health issues. It's not because you just got bad health. You got bad mindsets. Steve Devine, that's a good point. 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 That's a real good point. Jesus, you're the answer for the world today. Besides him, there's no other. Jesus, you're 
the only way. Do you know I heard the angels singing this after that, um, that guy got murdered? You know, I didn't really speak about too much stuff, you know, because I'm so busy preaching the word of God. But, but saints, a prophet is, I mean, God planted me in America. So he made me a voice in America. Like nobody can say that they made me a voice. Like God made me a voice in America. Like he gave me the authority to be a voice here. So he speaks to me about things. You got to know what you're getting involved in. You're soaking, you're sowing into justice. I'm sowing into the justice system. So you're putting your money in a natural system, but you never put your money into the kingdom of God system. But you want God to bring peace. How does that work? You never sold into the kingdom of God for justice. But you're sowing into uh, justice organizations for justice in America? Like, that don't make sense. So, God sees everything. You got to know what's vanity. You can't get involved in stuff that's vanity. And Satan would love for you to get your whole your whole confidence in how you look like I'm not in, I'm not, I'm not in exalting of a white person exalting their skin. I'm not in, I'm not in favor of no Mexican person exalting their skin, Dominican, Dominican Republic, no black person. But what I'm saying is like, I really get tired. You know what I'm saying? I really get tired of hearing you know, people getting out of hand and telling us, oh, we, because we black, you know, we we black, so we... Did. Like, that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Like, if you don't work, you still gonna be poor. <laughs> you you feel me? If you don't eat, you still gonna be hungry. You can say, oh, I'm black, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be well fed. If you don't work, you still gonna be hungry. Oh, I'm black, so I'm chosen by God. If you don't do the word, you're not going to make it to heaven. So what I'm saying, you're going to have to stay in the spirit about what's going to happen for the rest of this year because you're going to see more stuff happening. David, what does that mean? Marxist. You said they say, David... Friedlander. What does that mean, uh, Mar Marx? <laughs> Marxist. You came up with that, that new wave. You came in this broadcast sliding with a word that we don't know. How many y'all know what Marxist is? You you try to pit that that deep knowledge on here. Marxist. <laughs> we gonna pit a closed caption. I need, to, I'm a, I need to write Facebook to and put a closed caption on the deep words. What that mean? Explain Marxist, David. We give God all the praise. We give God all the praise. Jesus, you're the answer. For the world today, besides him there's no other. Jesus, you're the only way. Jesus, you're the answer. For the world today, oh, besides him there's no other. Jesus, you're the only way. Jesus, you're the answer for the world 
today Besides him there's no other Jesus is the only way Jesus You're the only answer for this world today. Besides him, there's no other. Jesus, you're the way. Everyone in Jesus' name, I pray for you that your heart will be untainted in this generation. I pray for you. You can't wait for people to say nice things about you. You can't wait for somebody to sponsor you. You can't wait for somebody to like you. It don't matter because everybody got their problems. Someone that's trying to lose weight, she feels prejudice around a woman that's skinnier than her. A woman that's skinny trying to gain weight may feel prejudice around a woman that think that they bigger than her. So everybody has their own prejudice. You see what I'm saying? What I'm telling you also, I want you to get the wisdom in this. You have to live your life blameless. And the blamelessness not going to come from people. Because you can do a million things to make people feel right about you and they still going to dog you out. So let me just say this. You're going to have to live your life In the same facet that Jesus lived his life. Because people always going to find something to say that you're not who you are, you this, you that. They're going to do that. So you can't base your life off of what people are saying. You have to live a blameless life. And here's what this means. That you listen to the Holy Spirit and you pursue him. You listen to the Holy Spirit and you cry out for his way, for his instructions, for his personality. You have to do that. And as long as you do that, you will know and have confidence. You have to be constantly running after King Jesus for yourself to know that you're good. Because I promise you, it don't matter how saved you are. Go one day where you're not talking with Jesus and see how bad you feel. You'll feel like you'll betray him. And you don't even have to kill nobody. You don't have to do nothing wrong. You go a whole day without thanking God. You go a whole day without telling Jesus thank you and see how bad your soul feels at the end of the day. How empty you feel. You could went to work. You could have did stuff for your children and you feel empty because you was created to attend to your true master who rewards you with the best. So. You have to keep that in mind with everything that's happening in the earth. You see stuff happen. It's so easy for you to jump on the bandwagon and start Oh, let's fight this and let's fight this. But what is the spirit of the Lord saying? And the spirit of the Lord don't handle matters just because you mad. If we want to be honest, look at the disciples, how they died. Look at Jesus, how he died. What's going to be your reaction to the death of Jesus? Are you going to walk in love, forgiveness? Are you going to have the right spirit? Are you going to have the right mindset? Are you going to let what someone decides to do to control your decisions to be reckless, to be angry, to be bitter, to be spiteful? Are you going to let that dominate you? Are you going to let that dominate you? Are you going to let that dominate you? Or are you going to choose? <laughs> I 
Mike Lee. Mike Lee, you feel good, huh? You posted all your scriptures. Mike Lee. Mike Lee posted all his scriptures. You feel good, Mike, huh? Mike? Money Mike, you feel good, huh? He posted all his scriptures. You got five more scriptures you got on you, Mike Lee. I'll let you post them. You got five more that you remember in Bible study. Come on, Mike Lee. Give me five more. That's one. You got five more up on you. <laughs> Come on, Mike. You got four more. You got four more on you. Come on. But you make the decision. Have, 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 have a talk with yourself to see, am I in the spirit about what's going on in the world? Am I in the spirit? Am I letting that bother me? Am I letting that change the pattern of how I treat people? You know, um, in my neighborhood, right? Um, sometimes you, you could drive past like, people that are considered white, you know, I don't even want to get involved in this whole skin thing because this thing is so natural. It's carnal. But for the sake of what I'm displaying here, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it. And so I'll drive past people and I like wave to them and I tell them hello. And I can see them so relieved. And because in their heart, they want to say hello to me, right? But it's like with everything going on, it's like there are some people that are not raised in that whole racism thing that are actually like it's an awkward time for them. Because with the push of how everything going, some people like, you know, I don't want to say something and set nobody off. I don't want to say something that's wrong to injure a sensitive situation. And so many people are like that. And so after they see you walking in love towards them, you see the breath of fresh air. And that's what Jesus wants. You got to love your neighbor as yourself. And what, I, what I'm saying is that Satan has been hiding behind as the prince of the power of the air to cause this whole race war. And to cause this whole agenda where you fight against people just because of their color of their skin. Or if you feel like they don't got no color to their skin. All of that is Satan's thoughts. And so you want to be careful that you don't let yourself fall into the bracket of looking at things and judging it. And then you let Satan bring you into this whole agenda that's secretly making you miss the spirit, miss heaven. And last but not least, if anybody do anything to you, you forgive them. You forgive them. And I'm not a hypocrite. You know why? I practice what I preach. I've had many people do things to try to destroy me. And I forgave all of them. And I showed them love. So at the end of the day, this is what Christianity, if you call it Christianity, I call it this is what Christianity is all about. This is what it means to follow Christ. Your heart's supposed to be different. Your mind's supposed to be different. How you deal with life and the events of this world is supposed to be different. You don't join in on the crowd and follow what the crowd is doing. The crowd is going to say this and that and that and this. You don't join in and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the spirit always goes the way that is least traveled. Did you catch that? The spirit always go the way that's least traveled. The spirit always goes the way that's least embraced. So choose the spirit in Jesus mighty name. Everybody look out for my video. I think all of you all, we started off with like 4,000 subscribers. We got 6,000 subscribers. I want to thank everybody. Thank you for everybody that's sharing the broadcast on YouTube. Thank you so much. I thank you. I normally don't be on there, but I'm going to be on there more so, Lord willing. Whatever the Holy Spirit wants. And we praise the Lord for what he's doing. Um, those of you all, thank you so much for 
supporting this uh, this move of God and helping me out. All my partners all across the world, I love you. You already know what it is. Um, the proof is in the pudding. Every day, the word of God is fresh. The presence of God is strong. And we thank God for everything. Praise God for everything. And so we bless the Lord. We say happy Father's Day, King Jesus. Happy Father's Day, King Jesus. If you love him, come on, everybody shout that out to me. Happy Father's Day, King Jesus. If you love him, if you love him, say, say happy Father's Day, King Jesus. If you love the Lord in heaven, if you love the Lord, if you love him for his death and resurrection, say happy Father's Day, King Jesus. Everybody blessings to you. And this has been very insightful. I thank you for all of my followers. I remember when I started off on, on Facebook, I only had about, I think I had about 100 people following me on here. Now we got 100,000. That's crazy to me. Um, It's crazy. We praise God for everything. We praise God for everything. And look out for videos on YouTube. Look out for videos on Periscope. And we bless you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you, Lord.